What's up guys, Iovo here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your very own thumbnails in Photoshop. So, the thumbnails you're going to make are going to look like the ones I make in my videos. They're the exact same way I make them. So, I did make a video about this, I think a few months ago, 6-7 months ago, but it didn't turn out too good, so I thought I'd remake it, and hopefully you guys do enjoy it. I do understand that you guys also don't have Photoshop, a lot of you guys don't have it, so I, would, I was thinking of also making a tutorial on how to make thumbnails with Pixlr, which is a free software. So, if you guys would want to see that as well, let me know in the comments, and leave a like. If we hit 125 likes, I'll do that as well. And with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do in Photoshop is click on File, New to of course create a new document. And the width and height are going to be 1280 by 720, which is the size of thumbnails on YouTube. And we are going to set the background contents to transparent and then click OK. So the first thing we do when we add a thumbnail or make a thumbnail is actually get a background for it. So you can find a ton of backgrounds in Google Images. You could of course search for like normal backgrounds. So you could search for, for example, a sky background or a blue background and just find a background that you like. You can also search for grunge backgrounds, which I've showed you before. They're like these really sick textured backgrounds. Or you can search for sunburst backgrounds, which are also called radial backgrounds. But just go through Google Images and find a background that you like. And make sure that the size of the background is, of course, at least 1280 by 720 so that you don't have to stretch it out later on. So I really like this purple background, so I'm going to click on it, click on View Image and then right click save image as and save it as something I'll remember so I'm going to call it grunge purple and then click save and once it's saved I'm going to go into Photoshop go to file place and then place grunge purple so there we go the image is now in Photoshop and to resize it what you'd want to do is hold shift and drag an anchor point just so it doesn't lose proportion and the video, the picture doesn't get stretched at all and then once you're done click on the check mark so now we're going to add some text into the thumbnail. So just click on the text tool, click on the actual layer, and then you can just type in whatever text you want. Just make sure the color is set to white. The font can be anything you want. So can the size. So I'm just going to type out generic. Um, I'm going to make it a bit bigger. So I'm going to press Control A to select all the text, and then just change the size to 270. That looks good. I'm going to make it a bit smaller now. So press Control A, and just find the size I like. So 230 was good. And then with the selection tool, I'm just going to move it over here. And we are going to add some more text. So we're going to create a new layer, click on the text tool, click on the layer, and then we'll change the font this time to all the Apache. I really like that font. We can make this bigger, 300, and then just type out text. Uh, I think I can make it a bit bigger than that. Maybe like 350. Yeah, there we go. And uh, you can click on this character tool over here to also mess with the settings of the text itself. So you can change the sizing and the spacing. So here, I'm just going to set the width to zero because I changed it before, so I'm just changing it back. And then just press the check mark and move it where I want it to be. And that looks good. Also, if you wanted to center the text, you just press Control A to select the entire layer. And then make sure that the layer is selected of what you want to center. Then go to Layer, Align Layers to Selection, Vertical Centers if you wanted to center it vertically and then layer align layers to selection horizontal centers if you wanted to center it horizontally. I'm just going to go back because I didn't really want to. And yeah, there we go. Now we're going to add some effects to the text. So what you want to do is right click on the text layer, go to blending options. Usually I add a gradient overlay, leave it black and white, and then make it 10%. And then I also add a drop shadow, which I set the opacity to 100, distance to zero, and then the spread and size I usually mess around with. I usually leave it at like 33, so it really stands out, but you can obviously make it more or less, so I can make it like 44, and that still looks pretty sick, and then just press OK, and we're going to do the same thing with the text, text, and we're going to right click it, go to blending options, and this time we could add a bevel and emboss to make it look 3D, but we are going to add a gradient, and we are going to set it to be a custom gradient, so we're going to click on the gradient slider, double click on the pencil, set it to purple. I think purple would look nice. Uh, there we go. And then double click on the white stop and make that a lighter purple. Let's just see that. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe make it a little bit darker on this side. There we go. And also add a drop shadow, make the opacity 100, and then the spread in size 33. Oh, we can make it a bit bigger. And that looks good and press OK. Now, if your text isn't standing out, what you can do is right click on the background layer, go to blending options, and then set a color overlay and make the color black. And then just mess with the opacity so that the text stands out even more. Or you could even give it a completely new color, 
to change the background color of the background. So I'm just going to make it black in this case and leave it at 30 so that the text really pops. Now the final thing we need to do is just add an image to the thumbnail. So we're going to go back into Google Images. Uh, let's just go back to Google Images and then just search for an image. Now make sure that the image is in PNG format so that the background is transparent and there's no white or black background. So we're going to search for surprised emoji and then just to get the PNG, you type in PNG at the end and we're just going to use this one because it's a decent size. And as you can see, there's checkers, meaning that the background is transparent. We're going to click view image, right click, save image as, and make sure that the save as type is PNG. Click save, and then go to file place. And we're going to place that emoji. We can tilt it and turn it so that it looks really, really nice. And it you know, just fits the thumbnail. We're going to resize it. And once we are happy with the outcome, just press the check mark and the image has been placed. And the final thing I usually do is add a drop shadow to the image as well. So I'd right click it, go to blending options, and then add a drop shadow, you already know the drill, opacity 100, and then spread and size of 33. And there we go. Now we go to file, save as, and just save the final image as a JPEG or PNG, and your thumbnail is ready to go. So hopefully you guys did enjoy this tutorial. If you did, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo, and I'm signing out.